The next episode of The Commercial Break starts now. Kassigans, welcome back to the commercial break. I am Brian Green. This is my dear friend, Kristen Joy Holdley. Best to you, Chrissy. And best to you, Brian. And best to you out there in the podcast universe. How the hell are you? Thanks for joining us on yet another episode of this, the commercial break. Hey, it's not for everyone, but fact news or fiction is guaranteed in 30 seconds or less. Go to the very old tcbpodcast.com to collect your earnings. <laughs> <They're> very old. <laughs> well, we had to do the old switcheroo on the website while we're getting a new website from our new website that was replacing the, the old website. The OG website. The OG website. We went back to the original version. Yeah. I have very important podcasting news for you. Breaking podcast news. Ding, 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 ding. So, you know, I I, uh, I have a day job because God knows this podcast ain't <laughs> paying the bills. Yes. I have a day job. And uh, somebody in the company, a podcast industry executive, texted me this morning and he said, holy shit, look at this. And he sends me a screenshot and he's Googling comedy podcasts, right? Uh-huh. He, that's what he's Googling. And up in Google comes up the... Like the pictures of our podcast covers, right? Okay. Like a list of podcast covers. Right. So there's like one and two, which I think one is uh, Conan O'Brien and two is Smartless. Number three is the commercial no break way. and then Charlemagne the God is behind no it. No way. So this guy was like, look at you, dude. Wow. The commercial break the God. And I was like, wow. Google. Clearly a mistake. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> What's Google doing? Well, we know from our Google days that actually Google Google sometimes tailors the results based on your own browsing history. That's true. Yeah, so this guy's yes. probably stalking us. He wants to <laughs> looking for a way to fire me. And I'm giving him 10 different reasons every single episode. So there you go. I'm officially old. And I'll tell you what. Get t- besides my increasing belly, my shrinking <laughs> my shrinking penis and my elongated balls and and the hairline going. Do you know what I had to do today that really is like to me is one of those things that indicates that I'm a really fucking old man? What is that? I had to schedule a roto router. A roto router. Like a like my own like my own ah, yes, colonoscopy. Yes. Uh, in and out. You got to do it. A good flushing. You got to do it. A good cleaning. <laughs> I got to do it. Well, <laughs> you will do the cleaning with all the stuff they make you take. So tell me, what's this all about? Because I know Jeff's been through a yeah, few of these. Yeah, and it's very important. Very important. I agree with you. Listen, I'm, yes. I'm all about checking my asshole. Yep. Like, I check my asshole frequently. I'm check. <laughs> Yeah, I ask Astrid to do it, but there's only in. so far that a marriage will go. You know, there's only so much a marriage will take. Yeah. You know, we check each other for like skin tags and moles sure, and stuff like sure. that. It's very important, right? It is very important. And every once in a while, you know, I'm, I won't get into all the details, but I'll say, hey, honey, it's time for a cancer check. Yeah. Yeah. Jeff goes once a year for one the, to the dermatologist. No, I mean, I check her. Do the for, whole body. Then, yeah. Yeah, okay, there you go. Oh, sorry. Uh, oh, yeah. I, I just went to the dermatologist yeah. and he looked me over. Mm-hmm. And he's like, you're one ugly son of a bitch, but I don't think you're dying. <laughs> That's he said, good. "Stop going to the." He's, it's as if him and Astrid got oh, together beforehand. The tanning, yeah, to talk to me about the tanning uh-huh. because he just gave me. He, he basically said the exact same thing my wife says every single time that I go to the tanning <laughs> bed, and so I'm sure I know it because she went a week before I did. Oh yeah, I know she, they they're, colluded. They're in cahoots. Of course they fucking are, and I don't <laughs> like that, but I can appreciate the where they're coming from. At least Astrid cares about my health and well-being. Yes. And the guy's only going to make the most amount of money if I stick with him for a long time. Right. So if I'm going to so. die of skin cancer next week, <laughs> you know, he's not going to get the extra whatever it is, $30 my insurance pays for that. Yeah. But I had to schedule the colonoscopy in now. So what happens? What am I in for? What am I looking at? Because I really don't know. Yeah. You, you said they'll give you a list of stuff that you'll take um, the what day you before. You can't eat after a certain period the day before, too, Ooh. and you can only do, like, clear liquids. Can I do water? Yeah, you, okay, can, do, I can, deal with you that. can do water. That's my normal but, diet. But, yeah. <laughs> water until <Right>. cereal and milk. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's like water, cereal, cereal and, cream. and cream. That's right. <laughs> so you, so they, like, they give you this these liquids that flush you out? Well, I mean, yeah, it's like laxative stuff it's basically. like 12 x lax yeah and then take it's this a ton gatorade of that. oh my god uh-huh. really so really it's kind of the day before that's the worst part you just sit in the in the bathroom yeah be be near the bathroom that when, evening when they are they putting me out for like yeah like night night time or are they putting me out like we're gonna put a, I think a it's breathing like apparatus on twilight you? twilight kind of stuff it's like yeah. propofol it's like yeah. the michael jackson sleep sleep time yeah, yeah, yeah exactly yeah. okay so um, the milky but, light but white then you liquid. don't feel it you, you don't can i, mean, I or can i not take some gummy bears 
stairs before I go. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> because maybe, I'm feeling like that would make it a lot more fun. Maybe. Well, they have like liquid THC now. So yeah. So you maybe could I do just that. drink that yeah, before I go. Yeah, clear liquid. Let's take, like seven, <laughs> take like seven spoonfuls of yeah. clear THC. <laughs> sure. The sticky icky, man. <laughs> <laughs> gooey ooey. I'm going to do some dabs before I go. Yeah. Yeah, because smoke is not considered... Like it's not going into my no. belly, yeah. So I'll just dab You're it good. up before I go. Dab it up. dab a couple dab finger dips, dab it. a couple finger dips, and a double dab, and I'll, <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll be dreaming of, uh, you know, all kinds of things, hot ass sex all <laughs> the whole time. <laughs> hot ass sex, yeah. Uh, so then you wake up, it's fine. You know, you're groggy. Astrid will, Astrid will be the one to take you home. You have to have somebody there. Yeah. And uh, yeah, and you know, you're fine. You wake up and you say a couple crazy things when you first wake up. And uh, then you're you're done and you're hungry. You want to eat after that. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. I just want to like, uh, I'm going to munch, munch, munch. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know if I want Astrid picking me up after that. Because you never know what's going to come out of your mouth when you're in one of those situations. It's not that bad. I don't know. I'm going to just, <laughs> I'm going to take an Uber. You, well, no, you can't. <laughs> they won't let you do it. They won't let you take an no, Uber? No, you have to have someone there. Have someone in the building. Mm -hmm. I'll pay the Uber guy a couple extra bucks to show up. <laughs> okay. I'll, I'll tell Carl to come pick me up. Yeah. <laughs> They're going to have to stay there in the waiting room. Hey. <clears throat> hey, girl, I'm here to pick up Brian. <laughs> wow, you look... You, have you ever talked to the Lord? <laughs> have you ever heard about Jesus Christ, our Savior? Here, uh, let me... Let me think, let's, give me your phone number. Let me send you a few pictures. <laughs> Look at that. That's a victory. We call that a victory V. <laughs> oh, the victory V. Oh, the victory V, girl. I know you got a victory V. Oh, is <laughs> Brian's awake? Okay. Uh, just tell him to hang on a few minutes. I got, I got some uh, pressing business up here at the front desk. <laughs> at the nurse's station? <laughs> at the nurse's station. You know, nurse's stations are just like uh, stepping stones to heaven, if you know that, Chrissy, because <laughs> nurses are one with the Lord. And I do some personal preaching at my house, if you know what I mean, girl. Oh, yeah. Uh, so if you give me your Skype, then... Uh, and we like uh, and we like to do it in the nude because you know that's how that's how we were born. Well, that's yeah. From ashes to ashes, yeah. dust to dust. <laughs> Lick on my balls, you must, you must. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, girl. it makes perfect sense. Hey, listen, what are you doing later, girl? Girl, you, Chrissy. Oh, me. Uh, this whole time I've been talking to everybody else, and <laughs> you're right across the table from me. <laughs> you're here every uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. That's I'm thinking, right. I'm, I'm thinking, free. I'm free, Carl. I'm thinking we go through the Bible together. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you Page can show me some special passages. Leviticus. Uh, Pornhub Levitic, uh, dash Pornhub dash Leviticus. <laughs> <laughs> <dot> com. <laughs> okay, girl, I got to go. Uh, <laughs> well, I'm uh, I'm old, so I guess that's the way it is, and now I got to yeah. go get one of those colon. But my grandfather did have colon cancer multiple times. Oh, wow. Multiple so times. you definitely need to be getting checked. Yeah, that's kind of... But he was so old that, you know, after a while, they were just like, oh, whatever. <laughs> whatever. I mean, that's what happens, you know, after you get so old. They're like, you know, what are we going to do? We're going to put you down. We're going to cut out half your colon, and then you're not going to survive the surgery. Mm -hmm. So what, something's going to get you. Yeah. Let's just leave you alone. Why yes. bother you with all that crap? Yeah. I just don't, I just don't like the, the thought of a whole day not eating and shitting all day. But I do know that it's important, so I will go get it done. Yes, thank sometime you. Sometime in the next five years. Okay, sounds good. This question <laughs> I knew was going to come up. What? I knew it was going to come up. I knew we were going to get this question. question at some point. We got an Ask TCB. Somebody's asking us for our advice. But it's. I think it's, this, is, this question is really directed at you and I. Okay. Okay? So, uh, so I'm just going to say right now, if you have children, small children in the car, you should turn this off. If your name is Astrid or Jeff, you should probably turn this <laughs> off. <laughs> okay, you ready? Here it comes. I'm just yes. going to get into it and, and, uh, and right we can in. go from there. Okay. Okay, TCB, here's my question. Need your advice. Okay. Can a man and a woman just be friends? Mm. My name is Callie, and I live in Cali. For almost 12 years, I've been <laughs> friends with Danny. Danny and I met when he was dating my friend. It didn't last long, maybe a month, but we, went all, but we all went out a few times, and we became Facebook friends. After they stopped dating, Danny and I would frequent the same bars and clubs, Okay. So we became... Yeah, uh, running into each other. Yeah, so it, it, it made sense that we became friendly. It's like we were an old married couple from day one. We love the same foods, but argue over where to go to eat. We know each other's coffee <laughs> orders. We fart in front of each other. We go shopping for clothes together. We fuss at each other over stupid shit, but we always laugh together and we always do things together. We almost never fight for real. Everyone thinks of us as a team. All of our yeah. friends, our family members know that if one is coming, it's likely the other one is coming also. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we have both had boyfriends and girlfriends over these years. Some I liked, some I hated, but we always ended up being sing sing single, and now we just laugh at the situation. Mm -hmm. 
Never, ever have we made out. Not once. We sleep over at each other's homes. And we sleep in the same bed. Sometimes I even sleep topless, but nothing. Not even a game of tag and tickle, as Brian would say. <laughs> <laughs> tag and tickle. Uh, we have this invisible line between us. I used to build pillow walls with some people. Uh, we have this yeah. invisible line between us that we don't cross physically, but we are definitely married otherwise. We've never spoken about getting together more than friends until recently. Listen, I love Danny. I have since the beginning, but I cannot see us being together together. I thought he felt the same. But the other day he brought it up. He asked if we should give it a try. He said that after all of these years, if we can stand each other this long, we could be good together. While I initially thought, hell the fuck no, I do not want to ruin this amazing friendship. I have to admit, I think sometimes I don't give myself to other relationships because of Danny. I don't want to lose him, so I don't give the attention I should give to the boyfriend at the time. I know this is a problem because boyfriends have told me so. Actually, all of them have told me so. (laughs) (laughs) Well, at least you're being honest. Uh, So it's got me asking, can we just be friends? I figure you two might know the best. Ah. Have you ever, have you two ever dated? Best to you. Love you much. Callie. Best to you, Callie. Best to you, Callie. This is a loaded question, I think. Uh, But the answer to, not the load, not about Chrissy and I, but I think just in general, the question is loaded. Yeah. But Chrissy and I have never dated. Yes, no. Never, not once. Mm-mm. But we have a very similar friendship when we were not Yeah, when married we were both single, people. we yeah. would sleep in the same bed. Sure. You would come to family functions. You came out and stayed at my grandfather's house yep. that night. Yep. And yeah, I mean, we, we were together. We were the Bobsy twins. We were the Bobsy twins. And that led to a lot of speculation it about did. whether or yes, not we were did. together. Because we also worked together. We worked together. Mm-hmm. And... um it, the, the truth was the truth, which was nothing was going on, but right. everybody thought so. Uh, so after a while, you just stop ask, uh, you stop answering the question because it doesn't fucking matter what you say. <laughs> yeah. People are going to think you're together. So whatever. doesn't matter. But I do think this is a loaded question as far as relationships are concerned. Yeah. Well, I was going to say the, you know, the fact that they're, they've dated other people and then now they're back both single again and they're maybe tossing around the idea. Let me, let me just say this, you know, what if the sex isn't good? What if they hook up but sex is not good? Then things are weird. I can think of a friendship. And it's I, then you've, you've yeah. ruined the friendship. Yeah. I can think of a friendship that we that we had where, and I mean we like she was in our friend group. Our group. And we ended up becoming buddy buddy after mm-hmm. we first met, and that friendship was kind of fast and hard. We were like, oh, okay, cool. We like hanging out with each other. Let's go do this. Let's go do that. And we would go to events together. Nothing like Chrissy and I's friendship, but to some degree, a little bit like Chrissy and I's friendship. Yeah. And we liked to laugh together, and we had a lot of fun. And she was a great friend to me, and I think for a period of time, I was a good friend to her. And then one night, Mm -hmm. she started, like, sex messaging me, and I think it just got a little saucy a little quick. Like, there was a lot of drinking going on at that time. Yeah, there was a lot (laughs) of drinking. a lot of drinking going on at that time. (laughs) And so there was ample opportunity to wet uh, wet your whistle, so to speak. Like, you know, I had sex with more of our friends than I care to admit. <laughs> and almost every time it didn't work out. No, it, The reason why, it things. just changes things. It you, does. You cannot look at a person the same way after you have sex with them. It's so true. And then jealousy creeps in. Maybe one person doesn't want to be then together anymore. Yeah. The other person does, and now you've had sex. And it's, yeah, it's tricky. I feel like you should be with your best friend but I don't, and what I mean by that is I think you should be together with your best friend. Like you two should think of each other as best friends. But I think if you start off as friends and you let that run too long, like if you let that run more than a year and then you try and hook up, in my experience, and I know there's pl- plenty of people out there who are going to tell me differently, but in my experience, it has almost never worked out. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you're you're married to Astrid, so well, <laughs> that didn't work out. I'm still trying to have sex with all her <laughs> friends, but you know, hey, listen, that's just my own personal picadillos here. We're in a... <laughs> open relationship and by open I mean she's going to divorce me if I do anything with any of <laughs> right. her friends the door will be open I will be able to yes, walk out of it she will, will close open. it behind me and then take the house the <laughs> the truth is though you, you say something that has I think a little twist of honesty a little like a little it, it hits me in the tickle pickle the when you say that you are giving more of yourself to the yeah. friendship than you are to the relationship that means two things. Number one, you should really be careful about 
your friendship with Danny moving forward when you get into a relationship with someone you actually give a shit about. That's right. But you're also dating the wrong people. Because when the time comes and the right person shows up, Danny will take a back seat. That's just it going exactly. to happen. Yeah. yeah. You're going to find yourself mm-hmm. in a situation where you're not going to... Danny, is he's just going to have to naturally kind of fade into the background for a hot minute. Yeah. I have a friend who like who checked out altogether and like I never heard from her again. Oh. I think I don't know. I'm not going to say her name out okay. loud, but you know who I'm talking about. She was like, like when Astrid and I, every time that I got a girlfriend, all of a sudden she like checked out into the uh, background, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. And one day she said, I think I like you more than you like me. Yeah. I think that I think, th- I feel. She wanted more. She did. She's like, I'm hanging on for that happy ending, mm-hmm. but I'm not sure it's ever going to come because I don't think you feel that way. Right. And I told her, I don't think I do either. Right. And then we were friends for many more years. And then when Astrid showed up, she was like. She was she, out of there. That last text message was yeah. almost cryptic. Yeah. It was like, I really wish you and Astrid the best. So this is like like months before our wedding. She was uh-huh. like, I really wish you and Astrid the best. I'll always love you. And mm-hmm. then I never heard from her again. Never yeah. heard from her. That's again. crazy. That's wild. Because I know. I mean, just thinking back on our friendship when, like, when yeah. you met Astrid and I met Jeff. Yeah. I mean, Jeff, you, you know, we, I kicked you out the night that <laughs> Jeff and I met. <laughs> Chrissy Hildy is living in an apartment building, and there there are two doors right next to it. Like it's this big, huge apartment complex, and there's like on one side of the hallway there's a door, and on the other side of the hallway there's a door. Mm-hmm. She meets Jeff while he's getting she's helping him with his groceries in the house. Isn't that true? Yes, it is. It yeah. is. I'd been out having some margaritas with my roommate, my yeah. girlfriend, and so uh, we saw him and. You know, I'm, 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 I get quite friendly when I'm a little <laughs> tipsy. I talk to everybody. So I saw him. He had a huge trunk full of groceries. And I said, hey. Hey. Well, hey. Hey, I, I got some you. sticky icky up in the apartment. <laughs> but I help you. And he said, okay, that'd be great. Thank you so much. And invited me in for a glass of wine. He invited her in for a glass of wine. Mm-hmm. And then, so like, let's fast forward to a week later yeah. or whatever it was. He called. And Chrissy and I are sitting in her apartment and doing our normal, let's drink 12 <laughs> Bud Lights in an hour and order a pizza right. and then we'll we'll just walk outside and see what kind of trouble we can get into. <laughs> exactly. Usually led to a bar and exactly. some kind of mischief. Yeah. So, we're in the middle of those 12 Bud Lights and Chrissy says, "Oh, my neighbor just texted me. You want to go over there?" And I'm like, "Sure." And she's like, "I kind of think he's like cute. You know, I met him the other day." And I was like, "Oh, eh, whatever. You're going to love me. He likes music and all this other stuff." Mm-hmm. So, we go over there. I love Jeff. Jeff's great. We talk about music for like 2 hours. And then I think I'm just kind of stepping on Chrissy's dick a little bit. So Chrissy is like, it's for like, like two hours. You gotta go. <laughs> yeah, Chrissy is like, don't you have somewhere to be? I had really kind of planned to spend the night at Chrissy's house. But I was like, ah, uh, yeah, I guess I should be going now. And Chrissy's like, like you can go into my apartment if you want yeah, to. You can yeah, hang go out there. Yeah, go. Wait, you mean uh, we were hanging out. Now you bring me over to some... Some guy at that time, some uh, douche's house, and then you want me to go and spend the night at your house by myself? Yeah, <laughs> what? That's what I was saying. But a good wingman always knows when it's time to exit, that's and uh, true. I think this is one of the few times when I may not have taken the first cue. <laughs> I had to wait till the fifth. But at that point, we're fucking hammered, so yeah. I was like, whatever. <laughs> but I left like a good boy. I left. I think I took an yeah. Uber home, but. uh but that was it. And the rest is history. But we continued to still be of course. extremely close. And we have continued that yes. throughout even even your move to Roswell. And that's why it's so sad that this is Chrissy Hoadley's last episode of the commercial. <laughs> <laughs> Because Jeff's going to tell her no more. He's going to say. Remember when Brian took Brian a couple of extra minutes to find those cues? <laughs> still, still taking him a couple extra minutes to find those cues. We ended up being friends through this entire thing. Absolutely. And the friend ebbs and flows. Friendship and ebbs and flows. And all your girlfriends, too. Yeah. You know, oh, God, you hated of... some of my girlfriends. Yeah, but I... I hated some of my girlfriends, to be <laughs> fair. You were dating the wrong girls. And well, when you met Astrid, true. I loved her yeah. and have continued to love her. That's you, true. You chose wisely, my friend. That's true. You you did love Astrid from the beginning. I, yes. I do have to say that. And so, Callie, I don't know what to do in this particular situation. You got to make that call for yourself. And I know that's not the advice you're looking for. Chrissy and I never cross that line. It's one of the few friendships where that yeah. never happened in this particular friend group where that never happened. And Rachel, too, mm-hmm. uh, where that never happened. And it worked to our advantage, I think, because I think had we slept together, had we dated, we may not be as good of friends now. And we probably certainly wouldn't be doing the commercial break together. Right. Uh, but if you feel strongly that that friendship is something you don't want to lose, then tell him he needs to go find his hoo-ha somewhere else. That pudenda yeah. is off limits. You're not going to do it. <laughs> 
and watch it when you guys are drinking because that's when things get slippery. That is. Yeah, all of a sudden you can just get yourself into a, a, a pickle, <laughs> literally into a pickle. Yeah, you're sleeping in the bed together and all of a sudden hands, hands. Hands start creepy, hands. crawling hands. I can't believe you sleep topless. I'd like to see a picture of Callie. You know she what I'm saying? She said she sleeps topless? She said she sleeps topless oh. in the bed. Oh, wow. And not, still Danny. nothing's happened okay. with Danny. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, whatever. Okay. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I don't know if I can be as strong as Danny. <laughs> I just don't know. <laughs> I mean, you know. Wow. Callie, send in a picture. I want to see what's going on, what's doing over there. <laughs> Send in a picture of you and Danny. I want to see what's doing. Yeah. That's what. That's the key. I'll see you two together. I know you got to pick some friend picture of the two of you together. <laughs> Send that in because I want to see. Because I think that, like, that's where the, all the trouble fucking starts it with does. all the friends is when I, someone gets naked exactly. and you're drunk. <laughs> exactly. Right? That's like, what are you going to do? Yeah. When you're 12, but like me, when I'm 12, I get to give another friend where I just had one incredibly wild night with this person. Mm -hmm. Like, wild night. Like, she was, like, throwing me over the kitchen counter and breaking glasses over my head and shit. It was, like, a... <laughs> it was intense. It was wow. really intense. Yeah. It was insane. The apartment looked like a bomb hit it when we woke up the next morning. I was like, what did we do? What is that? <laughs> what happened? I didn't know I had candles. Um, and it all happened... Not particularly because I think we liked each other. No, we didn't like each other in that way. Or maybe I didn't like her in that way, at least. But it all happened because we went to a bar with a another girl that I had just met that I thought I would like a girl that I liked. Oh, yeah. But then that girl left at the end of the night. And then me and our friends stayed around and we, we just drank ourselves silly. And when we got home, all it took, all it took was this girl unbuttoning her blouse, a couple oh, extra nipple. buttons, a little, a nipple slip, yeah, a nipple nip, slip. Nip and slip. it was like, it was like a firecracker going off. It was like, ah! <laughs> it's, uh, we just went to town. Uh -huh. And that's what happens. It is. That is what happens. But I think you've got a good... This episode brought to you by Budweiser. <laughs> by... King of Beers. <laughs> and nipple pasties. <laughs> nipple pasties. Uh, but I think Callie's got a good thing going with Danny. Yeah. I don't think you should should go there. Hey, girl, it's me, Danny. <laughs> <laughs> I figure we've been friends for so long, we could just try the reverse cowboy, cowgirl a couple times, <laughs> see how it works out. Listen, if it's a good fit, it's a good fit. If it's not, so I got a list of positions that friends get into. <laughs> cowgirl, from behind, up on the shower. I grab you and carry you across the room on the cock. On the walker. <laughs> on the walker. <laughs> <laughs> the walker cocker. That's what I call that, the walker cocker. Uh, and so I don't want to ruin our friendship, but I figure if we could just sleep together a couple times, yeah, we'll figure it, try out. it out. Why not? What? What's? <laughs> what's the harm? <laughs> what could go wrong, girl? <laughs> Call me back. Let me know. All right, I'll see you at seven for dinner with your parents. Bye. <laughs> uh, <laughs> dinner with your parents. That's uh, right. Yeah, the, it, it, you got a good thing going here, girl. Yeah, and I uh, just be careful, man. Be careful. Mm -hmm. Don't don't get into a frilly positions. And watch your back. That's all I gotta say. And I don't say watch your back like what Danny's gonna hurt you. He's not. He's your friend. He's not gonna hurt you. He's not gonna do anything like that. I'm saying watch your back like what you watch your own back. Because what happens is you start thinking about it and then it's a slippery fucking slope. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> maybe they should help each other, you know, set up like dating profiles or something and maybe yeah. help each other. Or do pick. mutual masturbation. Pick. <laughs> Mutual masturbation. Like in the same room, but not touching each other. Yeah. And then you'll really see what's doing. Yes. And then, you know, she, he's already seen you topless. So <laughs> that's what, that's the fucking problem, Callie, is that you're sleeping topless. And so he's taking that as a sign that maybe something yeah, more can happen. I think you might But be I right. think he's a little gun shy to actually get it going because he's like, ah, we're friends. And, you know, she's just probably comfortable sleeping like that. But the truth is probably Danny's up half in the night, like looking at you. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Danny's like, <sighs> <laughs> he's probably got his mouth yeah, like a half situation. an inch from your boob while you're sleeping <laughs> and he's like should i or shouldn't i what does she mean <laughs> uh of course make it all consensual danny i don't want to that's i'm not implying you do yes. anything wrong but i can understand where danny might be getting mixed signals here and that's why he might be going in he 
Yeah. Or maybe Danny has loved you like this from the, the beginning, beginning and he has just never had the balls to say it out mm. loud. And he's really unsure about whether or not you feel the same way because you don't generally you feel don't. the same way. No. So you're probably not giving off those signals. But then every once in a while, your tits pop out in this, <laughs> out of the covers at night. And he's like, holy shit, I love this girl. I really want to be with her. Yeah. And that's why he's it's a like... tortured love. Yeah, that's a tortured love. And it, ne- it let me tell you when it never works out. Let me tell you the other reason why it never works out is when one person likes the other person more than the other person yep. likes the other person. Yep, 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 yep. I heard this one wise... So this this couple, they'd been married for like 78 years or something, and they, they were each turning 100. And the question was, how in the world do you survive a marriage for 78 years when most people don't even make it four, right? Mm-hmm. When everybody's getting a divorce. And the I think it was the lady of the of the couple said, and this is so brilliant, she said, we never fell out of love with each other at the same time. Mm. And that was the key, right? She's like, sometimes one of us would drift a little bit right. from the relationship and the other one would hang tight. I can see tight. that. Yeah. I can see how that the works The other one then. would hang tight, right? They yep. would be like, I'm in this. Like, we're here together. And so you go off and not like sleep with other people. You, you go f- sort it out and I'll be right here. And then it's my turn to fuck you, right? It's <laughs> like, <laughs> but when you start a relationship with things so uneven. Right, out of balance. Oh, yeah. No, it's really hard to, mm-hmm. to come to the back. Have you had, like, unrequited love? Have you ever uh, had an un- I, yeah. I've had friends that have had it for me. Okay. Yeah, and I could tell. And it does. It makes things awkward. Oh, then. yeah, it's just horribly awkward. Yeah. But you've never had an unrequited love? No. No? Hmm. Hmm. I'm trying to think Maybe if I have. Maybe once. I mean, when I was young, I had this, there was this girl when I was a teenager and I just thought she was the coolest fucking girl that had ever lived. Yeah. She listened to Miles Davis ah, at like age 15. That is and cool. She was a year older than I was. She was absolutely, in my opinion, stunningly beautiful. And she would give me the time of day, like, like you would pet a puppy dog, right? right? Yeah. Like, oh, Brian, that's yeah. really... Oh, Brian, you're and so I'd be sweet. like, Miles Davis is great. Have you ever heard of Dave Matthews, Bane? <laughs> they have a saxophone, too. <laughs> and she'd be like, oh, Brian, that's really sweet. Right. And I was like, oh, she don't like me. <laughs> this is not how, usually how they act. <laughs> and I remember for one month, I was hard, 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 hard for this girl. Mm-hmm. And just... It just never happened. And then eventually she kind of fell out of the circle of friends altogether. Yeah. And she paid me no mention whatsoever. No time whatsoever. Right. Yeah, these things. And I saw her Facebook work. recently <laughs> and I think work, things worked out for the best. <laughs> She's like living in a trailer somewhere. Oh, God. Well, there's nothing wrong with living in a trailer. I want to be clear about that. I'm not like a classist or anything. But it just looks like the girl who listened to Miles Davis whose parents smoked weed and, like, let her get into the stat. Like, the coolest girl you would ever know. Yeah. Smooth and cool, mm-hmm. right? Coolest girl you would ever know is living the most uncool life I've ever seen well, in my entire fast life. fast forward 30 years. Yeah, I guess it's 2022 now. <laughs> yeah. She's got, like, 13 kids, <laughs> <Right>. too. <laughs> I was like, wow, 13 kids, huh? I would have taken you for one of those that never had one kid because the world's too fucked up as it is anyway, man. Too <laughs> fucked up, dude. <laughs> So I think I, that's an unrequited love I know I had. And then I know I had one on a teacher one time, too. Like right. It just, but it wasn't going to happen. You had some a crush. crushes. Yeah. I need to get to that. After 12 years, though, I think Danny might be more than a crush. Oh, yeah. I mean, he might be more than crushing. He's balls deep in love. He's balls deep in love. And he's just hanging on. It's like a, a movie. Do you think that, fr- that a man and a woman or a man and a man or a woman and a woman or an it and an it and a they and a they or whatever, mm-hmm. do you think that they... If you are attracted to that particular sex, right, do you think you can just be friends without ever having any feelings for that person? Wait, I'm confused on what you're saying. Okay, so, so, you, so you and I are friends. Yeah. Right? I'm not asking the question of us. I'm just asking the question of you, right? Do you think that if you have uh, – so you're attracted to men. Yes. If you have a man, a boy that's a friend, a man that's a friend – for a long period of time, mm-hmm. do you think you can go that entirety and just be friends and yeah. never have any feelings for them? Yeah. Because a lot of people say no. A mm-hmm. lot of people will say, at some point, you're going to catch feelings. Mm-hmm. At some point, that's going to happen. It's I like feel the, like the feeling stuff that will happen, I, mean, I feel like you just know early on. I think so, too. I, I have plenty of I, friends that are female yeah. that I never caught feelings for in the least. Yeah. Like, in the least. Yeah. I, I never once, they could have slept topless next to me the whole time. 
I right. probably would have had sex with him, but I still <laughs> wouldn't have had feelings for, <laughs> for them. <laughs> yeah, I feel like the feelings part comes on pretty early. Yeah, that's true. You know, you kind of you get that smell and that mm-hmm. that hunky funky that that fair man. I had a friend who's a guy, and I have a friend who is a man and likes women and is into women, attracted to women, and he adamantly believes that you cannot be friends with a woman. You cannot just be friends with a woman. He's like, it doesn't work like that. You can't. If you're friends with that woman long enough and you're attracted to women, it doesn't matter what she looks like, doesn't matter what she says, doesn't matter how she carries herself or what situations you guys get yourself into, you're going to catch feelings eventually for them. And I'm like, I just have to thoroughly, dis- uh, um, I just have to thoroughly disagree with yeah, you. Yeah, thoroughly mean, disagree. I do with too. You. And I mean, we're we're an example of that. That's true. So, you know, that's yeah. true. Well, the truth is we're really not friends off air. We actually <laughs> dislike each other quite a bit. But we're contractually obligated to be here because I, we both had to sign for the roadcaster loan yep. that we still are never, <laughs> ever, off. ever going to pay off. And now, see, I think the kids like, the kids today, I think, have like an extra layer of complexity about all of this. And I, I say agree. kids, I say just anybody who's single right now, mm-hmm. because it's so transactional. Dating is so transactional. Yeah, very much so. So it's hard to kind of get out there and have enough runway to suss out what feelings really are or what they're not. And let me give you an example. And you, when you and I were single, you'd go out with somebody once or twice or three times. Right. Before and you would know. Yeah, you would know. Mm-hmm. And you would usually meet them in a friend group. Yeah. So you would already have a hankering that the two of you liked each other. Exactly. It, just didn't, it wasn't as spontaneous and transactional as it is now. Well, and online. I mean, it's so digital. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. Like you, I mean, I say things in, you know, on a text. Yeah. That maybe I wouldn't, that's, I mean, internet trolls, people say stuff yeah. that they would never say to somebody's face. Catfishing and all this other shit. And it's hard to also gauge somebody's, you know, facial expressions and, Over text you know, message. Uh, hand gestures and things like that all, all those these little, little things. things yeah the flirting that goes on the flirt and like, the man, flirt's fun if i had one advice to anybody you know the kids are having less sex they're they're not interacting as much on this level and i understand it's because i don't think we're built like that really and our brains are trying to adjust to all of this mm-hmm. in in these the younger folks the p- people in their 20s and early 30s they're having a hard time navigating this or the research says they're having a hard time navigating this i'm sure some better than others because that's like when I all, almost every person that I ever dated, I met at a party. I met at a bar. I met through a friend. Exactly. They were a friend of a friend. Exactly. Something or other. Mm-hmm. And we had ample time to kind of walk into it. I never, besides the three Tinder dates that I went on, right. I never swiped right, told her I wanted to bone her, and then, you know, went to the bar and had sex. And, and it was, was so it. transactional. Yeah. yeah. So transactional. And I think this is a real... Or in the instant gratification, you know, too. Or, you know, you do, like, with the in-person dating, yeah, you need that time to kind of get the the feelings, see if they're there. You need to get people's feelings. You need to catch feelings for them. It's it's just such a weird world that we live in. And that's why Astrid can never divorce me, (laughs) ever. (laughs) Not going to happen, Astrid. No, 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 no. Hey, girl, it's me, your husband. (laughs) And that's why Astrid owns 96% of the commercial break. That's right. Uh, 56%, and Jeff owns the other 56%. It's 112% of the commercial break. (laughs) Because that's the math we need to make it make work. Uh, We did. Cheers to finding the right people. We each did. Yeah, thank God. We'd be stuck with each other. We would. We'd be like watching football on Saturday (laughs) afternoons. And I'd be like, did they score a basket? What's going on over there? <laughs> yep. We'd be in that Tinder world trying to figure it all out. Yeah, we and would. And I guarantee Ooh. we would not figure no. it out. Yeah, that's not how we're built. Nope. All right, listen, I got exciting news for you, just in case you're wondering. You can now dial 855-TCB-8383. 855-TCB-8383 is the brand new Our TCB hotline. Well, we have still have 661 Best Yo. Okay. 661, the word best, the number two, Y O Y O, that's 2378296. You'll figure it out, but you can also t- uh, find us at 855 TCB 8383. It's a toll free phone number. That's nice. Just in case you're overseas and you want to hit us up, uh-huh. you can do it on the toll free phone number. You can also leave us a message. 
Tell us about yourself. Questions, comments, concerns, content ideas. We're taking them all at 855-TCB-8383 or 661-BEST-THE-NUMBER-2-Y-O-YO. You can also go to tcbpodcast.com. Don't be surprised. It's the old website before the new website. Well, we're getting the old new website new again. So don't worry about it. We're going (laughs) to don't get scared. Uh, Add the commercial break on Instagram. No one cares. At TCB at TCB on YouTube. We now have a YouTube handle. Ooh, at TCB. All these things changing. Or YouTube.com slash the commercial break if you want to do it the old way. Uh, Chrissy is TCB Chrissy on, on uh, Tinder. And I am <laughs> TCB Brian on Grinder. So find me there. <laughs> yes. uh, and uh, I don't know. Look for my colonoscopy results coming up here soon. We'll talk about it. That's right. All on the commercial break. You know, I will reveal all. Literally. Okay. Yes, you will. <laughs> All right. I, I know it. it's a short one, but it's a good one. It's a great question. Thanks, Callie. Chrissy, I guess that's all we can do today. I think so. We talked a lot about our friendship. Yes, I love you. Do. I love you. Best to you. Best to you. And best to you out there in the podcast universe. Until next time, Chrissy and I always say, we do say, and we must say. Bye. Bye.